Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I just wanted to let everyone know um, about myself. I'm Jason Souza. started healing floxing. I've been floxed for about five years. Um, it's been quite the journey, <laughs> to say the least. So uh, right now I have a lot of questions from a lot of folks wondering about how they're gonna heal themselves, what can they do to make their lives better. Um, there's so many things you can do uh, to incorporate into your, your daily routine to really help yourself. But one of the biggest things I've found is peptides. Um, this is like new age gray area of medical um, biohacking, but it really helps athletes. Um, so in turn, it helps us. So um, BPC-157 is a peptide. It's an amino acid structure. It was used um, in a few clinical studies um, to treat ulcers because the peptide itself is from gastric juices. So basically, the peptide they used, um, BPC-157, which this is it right here, right? And all the studies, it relieved ulcers, um, it cured ulcers, um, and an ulcer is kind of like damage to the gut lining. So BPC-157, um, showed positive in those studies and then they took it into another study and they basically um, injected it to rats, right? So they severed a tendon in a rat, injected it with the BPC in the area localized and the tendon reattached to the bone. So there's been no human studies but a lot of um, doctors are using it in their practice because they see such good results and it really has no side effects because it's just an amino acid structure. So BPC-157 is huge in bodybuilding, kind of trickled down to um, people with you know, joint issues, um, any kind of tendon pain, muscle pain, this, this really does help. So BPC-157, I suggest any Floxy get on this stuff, okay? And the hardest thing about peptides is injecting yourself, right? Because not many people want to do that it's kind of scary right so you take this needle and it's oh, it's so scary and you have to just go ahead and and uh and inject yourself but it's really really easy um diabetics do it every day so it can't really be that hard right once you get over the fear you're, you're totally fine um so this bpc 157 you can get it from can lab right here see they're out of canada um the owner's really cool his name's gene it's made in um, a research facility. He has a few videos on, on where he produces them, but they're not Chinese. They're from Canada. They come in two days DHL. They're really, really good. I trust him. He'll give you test results. You can get them from other places like um, Peptide Sciences. They're Chinese. They're a little cheaper though. And also you can get them from Titan Medical Center in Florida. It requires blood testing. Um, I have a prescription for them as well. And basically, it's a prescribed BPC-157 if you want to go that route, but it's about $300 a month. Um, the ones that I'm getting from Canada are a little bit cheaper. I'm doing about two, two to three vials for that price, so it seems pretty reasonable um, comparative to getting them prescribed from Titan in Florida. So this 10 milligram vial, we're gonna talk about reconstitution. So this 10 milligram vial, right, you're gonna to wanna to get a dose of 250 micrograms. Um, that's the lowest dose. You can do that once a day. I prefer to do it twice a day. Um, I've done up to 2.5 um, milligrams or 2,500 micrograms. Okay, so that peptide is in a 10 milligram vial. You're gonna mix it with bacteriostatic water, okay? And you're going to use a syringe. Now this syringe is a preparation syringe, okay? It's a 10 ml, 25 gauge. You don't have to use this, it's just it's quicker to use this. And you're going to mix this 10 milligram vial of BPC with bacteriostatic water, okay? You can do 2 mls, so you're going to use this syringe right here, okay? So if you've never used a syringe before, right? If you can see these, these marks right here, these are mLs, milliliters, okay? So you can mix two mLs, you pull two mLs out of this bottle, you pull the needle back just a little bit after you pull the liquid out to the two mL mark, and you just wanna get a little air in there, right? Because these little containers are vacuum sealed so 
they'll suck this bacteriostatic water in really, really quick. So you kind of want to have some air so you can prepare for it. And you mix that, right? And once it's reconstituted, you're going to use these little insulin syringes, okay? Now these, these are in units. So you see the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So if you mix the two mLs of bacteriostatic water in a 10 milligram vial, for a 250 microgram dose, you're gonna go up to the five line, okay? That little five line right there. That's gonna be 250 micrograms, okay? I suggest doing at least 500 micrograms a day to see any kind of result, okay? So that's like standard procedure. So the needles you're gonna to wanna to use, I personally use these right here, six millimeter. Okay, as I'm really lean. So when I do it in my stomach, this little needle is good for me because I don't have much fat. If you're a little bit heavier, you can use eight millimeter or you can use half inch. I don't really suggest using half inch sub Q in your stomach just because it, it's a really big needle. If you wanna do sub Q locally, um, you can use an insulin syringe that's a little bit bigger than a six or an eight millimeter. But when you, in, when you inject locally, okay, so here's my elbow, okay? Say I have elbow pain right here, okay? You're gonna use a half inch syringe. You're gonna do the five, the five units, the 250 microgram, okay? You're gonna always use the bevel up, okay? So it's usually when the numbers are facing you, like facing up, you're gonna just go, go like this and you're just gonna slowly push the needle in just, just a little bit, just to get it underneath the skin and this is about a 70 degree angle, okay? And you just slowly push it in. Now, you, you wanna make sure you're not anywhere near veins. And I suggest just looking at the anatomy so you know where the nerves are. You don't wanna go in like this. You don't wanna go in like this. You always have to go in like this. Slowly, work it in slowly. Make sure you rub it with alcohol prep pads. And these are really important. You clean your skin, you clean your bottles, clean everything before you inject yourself, okay? Because you don't want to get infections. That, that's the worst thing about this. You, you want to make sure you, you have a sterile application. And that's how you inject sub-Q. So I do, I do my, my quads, and I do my calves, and I do my lower Achilles, just real slow. You have to inject really slow, but the five, uh, the five units on this needle is really not that much. So you're not really going to feel too much. You might feel a little bit of localized irritation after, but I, I really think that the, the effects locally do help. But if you want systemic effects, you want to do like a higher dose in your tummy. And you want to, I don't know if I can get this to go down, but you want to go to your stomach area. Like if this is my belly button, you want to go two inches out and two inches around. So you just want to kind of get, a, get outside of that area in here and you're just going to pinch an inch. So you, you're just going to lift up your shirt, you're gonna clean with an alcohol pad, you're gonna pinch your skin, you're gonna have your five units ready with your 250 micrograms, you're gonna look at the needle, make sure the numbers are facing you, and you're just gonna slowly poke yourself, okay? You can take a deep breath so you don't scream, but it's really not bad, and you just work it in, and then you just slowly inject, okay? And I do that every day, twice a day, and I've also done local injections too. I would start off with doing the, the tummy, and then I'd work on doing things locally. Local is kind of scary because, you know, it, it's, it's intimidating, honestly. The, the stomach has a lot of fat, but when you inject somewhere where there's, you know, muscle, um, there's less fat, it hurts a little bit more. Um, you have more risk of getting a bruise if you don't do it right, but I'm confident you can. If, if you don't feel confident, you can message me. We'll, we'll do a phone call, Skype or something, so I can show you how I do it. But the, the preparation is take, take your bacteriostatic water, take your alcohol pad, wipe both bottles before you put the, the bacteriostatic water into your peptide, and then you just put it in the fridge after, and, and you just, when you're ready to do a dose, you just put the needle in, you pull to the five, the five units, you can tap the needle a couple times to get the air bubbles out, you push it to the five units, make sure it's all liquid in there, and you just inject slowly. So I'm just seeing if you guys have any questions. If you do, um, 
you can message me or I can try to um, answer your questions here. Um, let me see what we got. All right. Gerard Dudley says, because the problem with peptide is to be sure of the quality. So um, I've been doing this long enough that I don't buy any junk peptides. I know where, where to buy good ones. So if you have the money, call Titan Medical Center in Florida. Um, they'll ship anywhere in the U.S. Like I said, you have to get blood tests, um, but that's a prescribed peptide. The ones from Canada are made in a research lab. Um, he's got videos of the research labs. He has test reports. I trust him, and um, I've talked to him personally a few times, and he's given me a 10% off coupon to give everybody um, that's in the Floxy groups, and it's C-O-N-F-10. So if you do go to canlab.net, you enter that code, you get 10% off. Right now, I have about 14 or 15 Floxies getting um, BPC, TB500. A couple of them are getting the... Um, the CJC-1295, other peptides we'll talk about in the future, but um, everyone that I know that's been getting them from him is really good quality. Let's see what other questions I have here. Um, Steph Sinclair says, will this be available for replay? Yep, it'll be on the wall, so you'll be able to replay it. Um, it's probably going to be there, I think, for, for the life of the group. Um, you just have to search for the live. I'm just wondering if you guys have any other questions. This is my first video, so I hope it's okay. Hope it was informative. Um, just to recap what you guys are gonna have to buy if you wanna do this, alcohol pads, insulin syringes. Both of these you can get at CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, um, super cheap. This is like a case of these is like 25 bucks and this is like three bucks, okay? If you can't get one of these big injections, uh, mixing syringes, you can just get um, a standard 5 8 25 gauge. Just tell the, the person at the pharmacy you need it for intramuscular injections. It's a little bit bigger than the insulin syringes, so it'll be um, basically quicker to inject and mix the peptide that way. You can use the insulin syringes. It just takes a long time. All right, Robin says, any side effects um, in the long run? What peptides when you stop peptides, oh sorry, what happens when you stop peptides? Does it all come back? Okay, so the side effects, I haven't heard of any side effects with peptides because they're amino acids. Um, there's been no long-term studies, so it's kind of tough to say um, if there will be any side effects. Right now, I don't know of any side effects from BPC-157. Um, like I said, it's a gastric juice-derived peptide, so it's basically you know, from the body. Um, I would say that as far as having things come back, I, I don't think so. I don't think once things repair, I, I think they're good for a long time, but with reparative or regenerative anything, if you're not taking care of yourself, diet, mood, stress levels, um, you're building a foundation so you wanna give your body all those nutrients. So if you're, if you're fixing collagen and tendons and muscles, you wanna give your body everything you need so that it can take those nutrients, build that foundation, repair that, that muscle skeletal issue that you're having. If you just, you know, if, if you're injecting BPC, right, and you're smoking a cigarette and eating McDonald's, in my mind, that's really not, not really, uh, not really good. You, you kind of want to uh, live a clean life, uh, make sure you're doing the right things. All right, Steph Sinclair says, I missed a little bit at the beginning. Can you tell me a little bit more about how the peptides help and repair? Okay, so BPC-157 in a bunch of um, rat studies, they've done numerous you can google it but they've um showed that the tendon will de they'll detach it from the bone and they'll basically inject bpc in rat a and then rat b will be a placebo and rat a's tendon will reattach i guess it's called antithesis so it'll reattach to the bone completely with bpc the 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 rat that got saline solution it didn't reattach um so that would hopefully extrapolate into humans and the bodybuilding community, it's shown to work every single time. Um, this peptide does actually work better with TB500, which we'll talk about in another video. Um, Derek Allen says, how do you get it from mixing um, the syringe to the six millimeter syringe? Okay, so let me go over that real quick. Okay, so this is the big syringe, right? So this is the mixing syringe. You can get these um, at most pharmacies or you can just ask them for an intramuscular injection syringe, which will be three mLs, 
and it'll have a bigger needle so it's easier to pull the water out okay so you're gonna just take this syringe here right and you're just gonna go to the two two mls okay you can go to the two ml or the three mls if you put more water it means you're gonna have more of a higher dose you can have more water the dose will be the same but you're gonna have a bigger injection so if you do up to the two mls you're gonna put it just like this you're gonna put it in and you're gonna pull out two mls right there right you take your two mls i always add a little bit of air you take this bottle of the peptide you make sure that you clean it with an alcohol swab right you keep this needle sterile you don't you don't put it down you, you, you either put the cap on it or you put it in the bottle right you put it in the bottle a little bit you hold the, the back of the needle plunger with your hand and you slowly inject the water and I usually just tip it over like this and I just slowly push the water in okay and I don't push this needle in right on the peptide I leave some space and I just let it trickle down the side of the bottle. I go in slowly, and then boom. And then you'll have this peptide, which is now reconstituted. It'll be water, okay? You take the same peptide. If you've touched the top, you're gonna clean it again with an alcohol swab. You're gonna flip it over. You're gonna take your insulin, insulin syringe. You're gonna pull the cap off, okay? Right? You're gonna stick this in the bottle, okay? and you're gonna pull out five units. If you've mixed with two mLs of bacteriostatic water, if you mix with three mLs, you're gonna take 10 units out. That's a 250 microgram dose. So hopefully that helps you guys. So I'm gonna leave this up. If you guys need any help, message me. Um, I'm, I'm definitely here to help you guys. Love you all, bye.